and in the Gospels, the four Gospels, all mentions of the Lord Jesus Christ gives you 777 mentions. Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Thy Word, and this is going to be a very unique series where I'm just going to be going through the, the phenomena of the King James Bible and why we believe it's the perfect and preserved Word of God, and not only preserved, but it's, it's his own thing, like it is the book of the Lord. So if you're new to the King James Bible, or if you're on the fence of whether you don't know the King James Bible is inspired, or if it's just a translation, this series will help you to realize that the Holy Ghost himself has inspired this work. This body of text that we can purchase at the store is inspired and given to us by God, and it's not just a translation of the lost scriptures in the original languages, because we don't have the original manuscripts anymore. It is the true word of God. And even though it's in our own language, God knows all languages from the beginning. And this demonstration of uh, numerical phenomena, and as well as other things, we're going to get into other stuff than numbers. But uh, I like to start off with numbers because it just shows God's uh, hand over all this. Because everybody in the world, uh, they know that the number seven is an important number, is God's number. And it's not to be messed with. And when you see patterns of seven showing up at the way that it does in the King James Bible, you know for a, a fact that this is either the luckiest book on earth, or it's inspired and every single word has been laid down with purpose. So uh, just to kind of kick this off, if you've already seen episode one, episode two is just going to keep going from that. Um, but if you, you've missed episode one, you should go back and watch that if you want to uh, see how the Godhead, how the Father, the Word, Holy Ghost is mentioned 777 times, how the first and the last word of the Bible and the first and the last books is mentioned 777 times, uh, and other stuff as well. So I'm going to start off with another 777 pattern that happens only in the King James Bible, and then we're going to get into uh, just the o overall canon, the overall volume that God has given us, and how we know for a, a certainty that God has given us 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament. First, let me let me show you this really uh, interesting uh, pattern in the four Gospels. So, uh, well, first of all, I'm kind of explaining, as you saw in episode one, I'm kind of explaining how to use this program, King James Pure Bible Search which is 100% free. You can download this on purebiblesearch.com. I'm kind of going through and showing you how to use this as well, and I hope that you're able to, to download it yourself and to, to look at these things and to see it with your own eyes and to show others. Uh, it's very powerful to be able to show others how, uh, how all these miracles happen in the King James Bible. Um, so if you go to the filters here in the top left, you can select uh, a specific like Old or New Testament, or the whole Bible, and you can look for words in specific areas. So if I want to open up, uh, let me deselect everything except for the four Gospels. So I'll de deselect the whole New Testament. I'm going to open this up right here, and I'm going to select Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All right, so in King James Pure Bible Search, uh, when you type in the Lord, it's going to give you Every single mention of the Lord, whether it's lowercase, uppercase, middle case, or whatever case. If you're looking for specifically case sensitive for only, for example, capital L Lord, all you need to do is click this little check mark, and it's going to get rid of all the lowercase lords. Um, so now I only have the Lord with a capital L, and it got rid of all the L's that are lowercase. So if I just put a lowercase L here, it's going to give me all the lowercase because it's still case sensitive. So you can see in Matthew 18, 27, and then there's 10 mentions of the Lord lowercase in the Gospels. But if, let me go back to capitals. So the Lord capital has 90 mentions, uh, which is interesting because Holy Ghost is mentioned 90 times in the Bible. Uh, but what's el what else is interesting is if you type in the name Jesus, 
And uh, let me, okay, so let me also explain this. So Jesus, uh, as it is right here, it's only going to give you Jesus. And it's going to give you all capital Jesus, and it's going to give you all lowercase Jesus like it is here, or capital letter only, first letter only. For example, there is also Jesus, all capitals. And let me disable this one so you can see this. So as you can see, Jesus appears in all capitals six times in the in the Bible, in the, or in the Gospels, in the Bible as well. Um, if you type in Jesus like this, uh, you can see that it got rid of the um, all capital ones, and it just, it's just showing you that one because it's case sensitive. If you turn off case sensitive, it's going to show you both. You see how it has Jesus and Jesus, both of them. Um, now, the other thing you need to know about this is that it's not including the apostrophe, uh, the plural, or not the plural, the possessive mention of Jesus. So if I had an apostrophe, as you can see, there's eight mentions of Jesus with an apostrophe. Jesus' feet, Jesus' disciple, etc. Now, if we want to include all mentions of Jesus, if we want to say, I, w I just want all G mentions of Jesus, I, why do I have to go through and find and list all these? I mean, you could do this. You could do that, and you could uh, put Jesus like this, and then you could do that, and then you would have all the mentions of Jesus. Or to shortcut it, what you could do is you could just put Jesus like this with a star or an asterisk, an asterisk. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you all mentions of Jesus uh, and everything. Basically, it's going to give you this word and everything that includes that word and after. So it's going to include the asterisk, the asterisk uh, versions of Jesus. It's going to include everything. If we were to make a case sensitive, though, it would throw it off because then it would get rid of the cat all capitals. Okay, so anyways, let me get back to showing you this. So there's 625 mentions of Jesus in the old, in, sorry, not in the Old Testament, in the uh, in the four Gospels. Now, the four Gospels is a very significant thing. That's literally the detailed accounts of Jesus on earth. Uh, these are not random books in the Bible. So we have all mentions of Jesus. Let me re-enable the Lord. So together, the Lord, all, with capital L, and Jesus, you get 715 mentions. Now let's add the word Christ. And again, we're going to add the asterisk. And in the Gospels, the four Gospels, all mentions of the Lord Jesus Christ gives you 777 mentions. Now stop what you're doing and think about that in conjunction with all these other things that we've already found. And we've probably not even scratched the surface. There's probably so much that we'll never find all of this. We'll never be able to, to you could search God's word forever and you still find new things. But the chances of that happening, especially with the fact that all these other things happen, is, is just mind blowing. Now, now if, you're, if you've seen my past videos, and you're, um, or, if you're just like picky about this, I guess you could say, you're gonna notice that uh, one of two of the mentions of Christ's is false Christ's. So, uh, for example, let me um, disable these and show you that if we type in false Christ's, shows up twice. Even if we just show up, type in Christ's. Those are the only two places where it shows up. Now, the picky person will say, well, that's not, then you have to get rid of those because that's not talking about Jesus Christ. And we do get rid of those to show in the, 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 the total mentions of Jesus plus Christ in the Bible. If you've seen the seven videos, 777 plus 777. Now, if we're consistent, we'll get rid of those here too. Uh, so let's do that. So let me show you how to to remove, uh, to exclude uh, Christ. So for example, so I'm going to put the asterisk in here, and then I'm going to put Christ's, or I'll just put in false Christ's, and I'm going to click the button called exclude. And I see how I made that a negative two, and it took away two from the overall count, which gives us a count of 60 instead of 62. So if we re-enable these, you'll see that we're down to 775. So that's what's gonna happen. 
when you have somebody that's picky and it picks this apart. But all you need to do is uh, say, hey, what's, what does Christ mean in Hebrew? It means Messiah. It's the exact same word, the anointed one. How many times is Messiah mentioned in the New Testament? Well, it's, uh, it's spelled as Messiahs, and I'm spelling it wrong. But it's mentioned two times. So even if you remove the false Christs, God has given exactly two mentions of Messiah. So all mentions of Christ, Messiah, Jesus, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, 777 mentions. All right. All glory to God for that. Now that you're, kind of, you're getting a grasp of how this works, you'll be able to use it a lot more effectively. Um, and another interesting thing that you can do is, let's see here. If you, let me pull up the entire Bible. So one of the most famous passages about Jesus Christ is John 14, 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So let me just type in for, uh, real quickly. I want to show you how God has, he has orchestrated the Bible. I guess you could say it like that. I'm not sure if I'm using the right terminology, but the Bible is set up in a way to where it points to Jesus Christ's name from different angles and uses the different counts uh, in different ways. So for example, Jesus by itself shows up 973 times, but with the asterisk, it shows up 983 times. But if you, re if you look at all the mentions of Jesus, three of those uh, are referencing people who are not actually Jesus Christ. Two of them are referencing Joshua from the Old Testament because Joshua and Jesus are the same name, uh, which is an interesting thing as well if you look it up. Let me, I just gotta show you real quick. We'll get back to this. Jesus plus Joshua, uh, 1,189 mentions. And if you don't know why that's significant, it's because there's exactly 1,189 chapters in the Bible. Uh, okay, anyways, back to Jesus and Jesus's. So there's 983 mentions of all mentions of Jesus. Or if I just put the asterisk, you can see that there's 983. But three of those mentions are not actually talking about our Savior. Three of those mentions, one of them is talking about uh, a guy named Justice in Colossians 4.11. Uh, and Jesus, which is called Justice, who are the circumcision. That's not talking about Jesus Christ. And then the other two, uh, one's in Hebrews and one's in Acts, talking about Joshua uh, from the Old Testament. So if we, the interesting thing, the thing I'm trying to explain to you is that God has set up uh, patterns that point to all these numbers that point to Jesus. So even though Jesus' name uh is mentioned three extra times in his actual self, God still points to that number, 983, because Jesus still means, the name of Jesus means salvation, right? So, God has set it up so that if you were to look at 973, there's significance, you can find significance with that in the Bible very easily. For example, uh, uh, if I go to... Nehemiah, I believe it is 739. Yeah. The priests, the children of Jediah, which in Hebrew means Jehovah has known, Jehovah knows, of the house of Jeshua, that's the Hebrew form of Jesus. It's the equivalent of Joshua, exact same as Jesus in Hebrew. The house of Jeshua, by the way, it also means salvation. Literally, Jeshua means is the word pronunciation for salvation in Hebrew. Of the house of Jeshua, 973. So God has this number directly linked to Jesus' name in the Old Testament, 973. And that's the exact amount of times that Jesus shows up without the little tittle. <laughs> every jot, every tittle. If you, don't, if you don't include the little apostrophe, 973 times Jesus' his name is mentioned. And right there it is in the text itself. Jehovah knows of the house of Jeshua, Jesus, 973. Very interesting. Now, what I was trying to say is that if you look up 983 in the Bible, there's 
it, there's significance with that as well. It again will point to Jesus. Now, the example I have for this is if you type in way, truth, life, and you go, and I'll, let me first, let me show you this feature as well. This little drop down will let you show you, for example, if you select the same verse, it'll show you all the verses where all three of these search phrases are mentioned in the same verse. If I take away this one, for example, you see how truth and way are mentioned in the same verse. Uh, but if I add way again, there's only, uh, let it load, oh, whoops, sorry, life, if I add life again, there's only one verse in the Bible that has the words way, truth, and life, and that is John 14, 6. Now let me go back to uh, all of the mentions. I'm going to scroll all the way down and find John 14, 6, and I'm going to click Command D for the details. I'm going to pin this so it doesn't go away. Now look at this. This is the 983rd verse out of all the mentions. So if you were to count all these verses, not, this is the 983rd verse to include either way, truth, or life. And that's the amount of times that Jesus shows up and his name shows up in the Bible. Incredible. Um, okay, so we be I believe the King James Bible is the book of the Lord, without a question. And what, what do I mean by the book of the Lord? Well, there's a prophecy in Isaiah 34, 16, and all of Isaiah 34 is end-time prophecy. The entire chapter is end-time prophecy. If you want to start off, you can... Uh, you can read, for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies, etc. Melt of their blood, all their hosts. This is uh, a second coming, day of the Lord's vengeance. Uh, this is prophecy that has not yet been fulfilled, but it will be fulfilled. And part of, at the end of the prophecy, at the end of the chapter, it says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So how are you going to do that? And how are you going to check if all these things come to pass if you don't have the book of the Lord? So you must have the book of the Lord in the end times to verify uh, that no one of these shall fail. So the book of the Lord is the only time it's mentioned in the Bible here is in this prophecy. The King James Bible, I believe, is the book of the Lord demonstrated by all these proofs that have been shown uh, on this channel. And... I'm sure there's hundreds that I have not seen and I never will see. Thousands, even millions that I won't ever see. Um, okay, so the Book of the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, that is the uh, name for Jehovah. So in Hebrew, it's the that tetragrammaton, four-letter word of Jehovah, right? In English, it's Lord, capital L-O-R-D. So that's the name of God. Now... If you were to type in uh, Lord and get the first mentions, we probably already know this if you've seen my past stuff, but I want to show you something new. Uh, the first mention in the uh, Old Testament, let me go to okay, Genesis 2.4. Uh, it's in Genesis 2.4, and you can see that's the first mention in the, in the Old Testament, 2.4. Remember those numbers, 2.4, Genesis 2.4. In the New Testament... When it shows up, it's Gen Matthew 22, 44, 2, 2, 4, 4. Now, there is some sort of pattern going on that I've just began to kind of understand with, uh, now, by the way, this is also the, uh, uh, let me click this. It's also word number 777 of the chapter of Matthew 22, uh, Lord. Um, and it is... Uh, let's see here. In, in Genesis, it's the 88th word of the chapter. 88th of Genesis 2. Okay, so this is a pattern that I'm beginning to discover. And it's very interesting. So when the house of the Lord was built, uh, I believe it's in 1 Kings 6. Oops, 6, I can find this. Uh, it is in the fourth year of Solomon's reign. 
in the month of Ziv, which is the second month. So the fourth year and second month was the temple. Uh, it began to be built. So there's those numbers again, four and two. If you look at verse one, and it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt. 480 equals 240 plus 240. Uh, Revelation has 22 chapters and the Bible, and it has 404 verses. So as you can see over here in the details, 22 chapters, 404 verses. There's those numbers again, 22 and 44, 4 and 4. Now, there is something going on here because if you type in uh, Lord, all capitals, and God, all capitals, and you look at, um, let me add the uh, superscriptions, the Old Testament only. So superscriptions, by the way, are the headings in Psalms. If I were to remove Old Testament, you can see it's in the Psalm superscriptions. So all mentions of Lord, all capitals, and God, all capitals, in the Old Testament equals 6,776 mentions. Now, the reason that is incredibly significant, well, first of all, it's interesting because uh, if you go to the New Testament, Lord, in Matthew twenty-two forty-four, 44, is the 6,777th mention. But even more interesting to me, at least, is that um, 6,776 equals, well, let me just type it like this, 22 times 44, whoops, times 7. So, so there's those numbers again. 22, 44, 2, 4, and then his perfect number 7. It goes 6,776. So it's interesting to me because the book of the Lord means, to me at least, I feel like we should be able to find patterns specifically with the name of the Lord in all capitals if that is truly his book. And I think indeed we do find many incredible patterns that point back to the fact that this is his book. Now, I want to uh, wrap this up, and I want to wrap this up in a really interesting way. So, if you see my past videos, you're going to recognize some of this, but I want to cover it uh, in this informal setting where I'm able to talk about it. I want to explain to you why, how significant this is. Now, if you type in, first of all, if you type in the word book in the Bible, now I'm going to get get into, let me just uh, overview this. There are many people in this world, even Christians, who will say that there are lost and missing books in the Bible, and that we don't have the complete Bible, the Roman Catholic Church took out some books, or whatever. That's not true. We have the complete Bible, and the complete Bible is, is in the King James Bible, it's 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament. And God has put this number, he has signed his, this number into the Word of God, into the King James Bible specifically, so much that there is no possible way you could ever say otherwise. Now let me demonstrate this. The first demonstration is the word book itself. If you type in the word book, and Bible literally means book, if you look at the word book itself, it does not show, it shows up 188 times, 175 verses. It does not show up in 30927 verses. There's literally the digits of 39 and 27. 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament. Uh, but that's definitely not all. That's just the beginning. If you type in the volume of the book, now, we know the Bible is a volume of books. And when you type in the volume of the book, it's a very interesting thing that you find. If you go here and type in, or let me just uh, click it. If I click the word the, or if I just click here, um, the volume of the book is word phrase 390270 of the Bible. Again, pointing to 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament. If you skip ahead, so what does that mean? That means the first word of the Bible is in, in the beginning. The second word of the Bible is the. Third word of the Bible is beginning. Fourth word of the Bible is God. 
in the beginning, and if you keep counting all the way, all the words of the Bible, the volume of the book begins on this word, 390,270. Literally with the numbers, 39 and 27. Now, there's if you think that's a coincidence, you're just out of your mind. <laughs> there's no way that's just a coincidence. Especially the fact that there's only there's an, a mention of this in Hebrews, and Hebrews is exactly 39 books away. And if you look at the Bible like a circle and you go from Hebrews to Psalms, so you go from Genesis to, I mean, so if you go from Revelation to Genesis to Exodus, there's 27 books because it's they're perfectly uh, split apart. <clears throat> Both of them are in verse number sevens. Um, if you go to the uh, end of this phrase, the volume of the book, and if I click Command G, and if I go to this button here that says switch to relative mode, this is going to let me skip ahead words or behind words. So if I want to go ahead by two words or by three words, I type in three and it goes, look, one, two, three, and it shows me the third word ahead. If I go seven words ahead, it'll go to the word delight in uh, the next verse. Now, if I type in a big number, like the word, the number that we just looked at, where the volume of the book starts at, so if we skip ahead another 39, 390,270, we end up with the word book in the seventh verse, Revelation 5, 7. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Uh, that's also the seventh word of that verse. Now, what's interesting to me is that Okay, so this is going to take some explaining, so bear with it, okay? When you look at the word counts here in Pure Bible Search, and you have this on the default settings like I have it, uh, right here, 390,270 is including the Psalm superscriptions. So if I were to go up and type or click one of these words right here, musician, that's word number 390,103. And then the next word, 04, 05, 06, 07. Okay, so it's including those words. However, with Pure Bible Search, when you have it set up like this, uh, and you skip ahead with this passage navigator in relative mode, if you skip ahead, it's actually not going to count those words. Uh, so, again, this is something that is kind of, I guess, advanced, but something that I have noticed when I've been studying Bible numerics is that God has inspired both, and there's a reason that he has separated the superscriptions from the verses, or the psalm headings from the verses. And they're all it's all inspired, 100% of it. But there is numerical reasons why they're separated, and it's very interesting. Now, if you were to just simply uh, count the words, and if you were just to simply count uh, to, to include the superscriptions, because this remember this passage in Navigator does not include them. If you go to the end of this verse where it says, it is written of me, talking about Jesus Christ, um, it's actually going to take you to uh, Revelation uh, 3.10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Now, this, King James Bible believers, if you have uh, studied uh, a lot of the preachers and teachers of the King James Bible, uh, we all know that this is a prophecy of the King James Bible. Because this happens in the church of Philadelphia. The Philadelphia church is the one who keeps God's word. And this is literally when it says the uh, kept the word of my patience, Jesus Christ's word. Uh, this is talking about the preserved Bible, because it's in the age of Philadelphia, which is in the previous church age. We are currently in the Laodicean church age, where Jesus Christ approaches us as the Amen, the finished Bible, the faithful and true witness, which is the finished Bible. Faithful and true, if you type it in, not only describes Jesus Christ, uh, whoops, but it describes the Bible, where it says, uh, these sayings are faithful and true. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Jesus Christ is the Word. He's the Word made flesh. The Bible is somehow one with Jesus Christ. And I believe this King James Bible is the closest Bible, the closest book that man has ever gotten to the whatever you want to describe that uh, uh, togetherness of Jesus Christ, the Word, uh, and who he truly is. So, um, 
Okay, so before I confuse myself and everybody else, let me show you some interesting things about 3927. So 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament. If you go to Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and I'm going to open again that passage navigator. I'm going to skip ahead 777, I'm sorry, not 7, uh, 3927 verses. So if I skip ahead, 39, 27 verses, again, the signature of the canon of the volume of the book, we end up at Numbers 7, 77, which also includes the 77th mention of sacrifice, if you see my video, um, which is also interesting, real quick, if I may, that is the 77th mention of sacrifice, it's also the 8088th word of numbers, and 888 is the number, the signature of Jesus in Greek numerics. Uh, so there's things you would never expect to find in like all these like when you sometimes when you read through like for example First Chronicles uh, with all these names you will find incredible things <laughs> incredibly significant things. Oh that's another thing. Before I was mentioning uh, 2 and 4 with uh, with Lord and with uh, the book of the Lord and how uh, he shows up in Genesis 2 4 Matthew 20 44 etc. Um, fourth year second month there's 24 elders surrounding the throne of God in heaven. So Revelation 4 and in verse 4, uh, there were 20, 4 and 20 seats. And upon the seats, 4 and 20 elders. There's that number again, 2 and 4, 24. That's in the 242nd chapter of the Bible. Now, uh, I'm going to explain this more in my uh, Abomination and Desolation video, which is making good progress, by the way. It's been a year in the making almost. But... I'm going to explain it a little bit there, and then I'm probably going to make another video in the future as well to explain the 4 and 20 elders, uh, because they are perfectly typified in the Bible. And I'll explain it more in the video, but if you just go to 1 Chronicles 24, you're going to find it. Uh, it you, so a key detail of those elders is that they're wearing crowns. They have authority, right? 1 Chronicles 24, uh, they appoint the, the sons of Aaron... Um, so Aaron's the high priest, or he was the high priest of the, the tabernacle. So Nadab and Abihu, they died. Uh, Eliezer and Ithamar. So the, the sons of Aaron who come from Eliezer and Ithamar, they end up getting divided into governors of the temple. And it literally says that they're chief men. And then it says that they are appointed as governors. Uh, here we go. They were divided by lot, one sort with another, for the governors of the sanctuary and the governors of the house of God. And if you go down and read through all of them, there is exactly, uh, where is it? Uh, oh, here we go. And the 4 and 20th to Amazia. So there's exactly 24. 24 elders are perfectly typified here by the governors of the, of the house of God, the temple. Now, I'm going to explain that more in the Abomination of Desolation video, and then after that, I'm probably going to make another video because that gets pretty deep, uh, and I'm not going to say why yet. I'm going to save that for later because we're getting into a lot of stuff right now, but there is incredible significance in that chapter, and we'll, we'll get into that in a later video. So subscribe, please, and we'll get into that later. Uh, so back to 3927. I'm sorry for my little rabbit trails, by the way. I really love the Word of God. <laughs> I love the Bible. I love studying the Bible. I love everything about God's Word. Um, and I just find everything incredibly significant uh, about how he has set it all up and how he has given it to us. Um, okay, so if we go to um, the 3927th mention of God and Lord, it's very interesting. So let me type in God, and let me type in, let me look for the 3927th mention. So as you can see right here, it's a search result. For example, 46. I'm looking for the 39, 27th mention of God. So let's see here. It's in the New Testament. Somewhere in the epistles of Paul, I believe. Keep going. Okay, right now I'm at 38, 40. Okay, so we're getting close. There we go. So the 3927th mention 
of God. And again, that's a signature of the canon, the, the volume of the book. It says, For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I may live unto God. So I, through the law, and that's God's word, that's the Mo God's word through Moses, through the basically the Old Testament, am dead to the law, that I may live unto God. That's pretty profound. That'd be the 39, 27th verse of God. Now, if I go to Lord, it's even more interesting. If I go to Lord and I go to 39, 27th verse. It's going to be in the Old Testament. And I'm almost there. Let's see. Here we go. Now, this is the 39, 27th mention of Lord, which has nothing to do with the Bible, right? Okay, it's just the Lord. It could be any mention of Lord in the Bible. But this is specifically the 39, 27th mention. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. That is, this verse contains the 39, 27th mention of Lord. That's a powerful verse to represent the Bible. Now, um, real quickly, if I type in the word bondage, and if I type in the word liberty, you see that I have 39 mentions of bondage, and I have 27 mentions of liberty, perfectly representing the Old and New Testament. And what's incredible about this is that in the New Testament, these exact words are used to describe the Old and New Testament. Bondage is the exact word used to describe the Old Testament, and then liberty is the exact word used to describe the New Testament in the same verse. There's multiple verses, actually, that they use these uh, words as allegories. And if you go to Galatians 2.4, again, there's that 2.4 again. And that because of false brethren unaware brought in, who came privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Okay, if you go back to, and this is Galatians, right? This is dealing with people who were trying to get you circumcised and back into the law, back into bondage. Uh, if you go here, um, let's see here, 424. Let's see here. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a bondmate. Uh, let me start here. Tell me. Ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? So we're talking about the Old Testament. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. All right? So there's bond, there's free. We're talking about bondage and liberty. And we're about to get to bondage. Uh, but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory? For these things are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, which is gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. So, literally the word bondage is directly talking about the allegory of the Old Testament. And if you go even further in the Bible, or maybe it's previous in the Bible, uh, yes, yeah, 2 Corinthians 3.17, the word liberty is used to describe the New Testament directly. So, where is, where is where I'm waiting? Okay. I'm trying to figure out where I want to start with this. <clears throat> okay. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshy tables of of the heart, and such trust we have through Christ and Godward, not that we are sufficient to, of ourselves to think anything of ourselves as of ourselves, but our sufficiencies of God, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. So, notice how it's talking about the New Testament, and how the Spirit is in the New Testament and giving life. Uh, but if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, if you're a Seventh-day Adventist, you should be reading this verse. Uh, okay, it talks about the um, 
uh, oh, and in the New Testament, and it continues. Uh, and not as Moses which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadily fast, uh, steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished, but their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil, uh, we're going to get to that in a second, un untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which is, veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses has read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Directly talking about the New Testament. So, the bondage, talking about the Old Testament, has 39 mentions. And there's 39 Old Testament books. Liberty has 27 mentions, 27 New Testament books. Last thing I'm going to show you, and then we're off. Veil, with an asterisk. So, all mentions of veil in the Bible. 39 mentions. Now, there's something very interesting about this. And we just read, so here's the last mention. Nevertheless, when it shall be turned to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. What's the veil? It is uh, the reading of the Old Testament. The reading of the Old Testament, the veil, 39 mentions. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. The Old Testament, 39 books. Now, what's incredibly interesting about this is that why in the world is the word veil only mentioned 79 times when it's actually mentioned 46 times in the King James Bible? What do I mean? If you look up the word veil with a V-E, it shows up seven times. And there's no Hebrew or Greek reason, there's no translational reason to use different variations of the word veil when it's literally talking about the same thing. For example, if you look up, well, if you look up, let me just say this, if you look under modern dictionary, you will find a difference between the two. But in the Bible, there's no difference. Now watch. In Exodus, when it's talking about the veil between the holy place and the most holy, so thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat. So you see how that's the letter A, right? That's V-A-I-L, talking about the veil between the Ark of the Testimony and the holy place. Now look in Hebrews. And after the second veil, with an E, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. This is talking about the same veil. But one has an A and one has an E, so there's no difference between the two words. They're the same word, but with different spellings. And look, look at how veil with an E has mentioned seven times. Look at where how it's mentioned. Behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. By a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So, while veil with an A points to the Old Testament, veil with an E, mentioned seven times, points to the New Testament, where the Spirit of God is. Now, if you are watching this video and you don't understand the difference between the King James Bible and other Bibles, we're going to get into that in future videos. But I hope you can see just from this that we do have a book that is inspired by God. And I'm going to show you the importance in the future videos of why we should only be using the King James Bible in English and no other translations. We're going to see how they are completely corrupt and how they completely distort God's words. And they will, over time, they will really begin to mess with doctrine. And they'll really begin to mess with even your walk with Christ because you're reading a different version of God's pure words. They're words that are not supposed to be there in other versions. They're words that are taken away, words that are added, words that are changed. Literally three times in the Bible, at least, God commands us not to do that under the severe penalty of not having your name okay let's just go let's just look at it if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy god shall take his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book why would you ever want to participate in a bible that is in that is in that group 
of Bibles, of books, that take away from God's Word. The words. Literally, it says the words. It doesn't say the, the fundamental doctrines or the, the general ideas. It's the words that are important to God. God knows everything from the end, at the end, from the beginning. God created language. He gave language to Adam. He split up languages in Babel. He made all those languages. He knows how those languages are going to evolve. He knows English is the language of the world at this point in time, and that we're approaching the second coming of Jesus Christ. And that's why he has chosen to give, a, give, give us his Bible in English. It's really not hard to understand if you actually believe God and you believe in the power of God and in his and in the fact that he knows the end from the beginning. It's really not hard to grasp that he has inspired this Bible. And I pray that you take that away when watching this video, that you stay away from those other modern Bibles. And we'll get into that further in future videos, but just take my word for it of how badly they are corrupted. And how badly they are messed up. I'm talking about the NIV, the ESV, the NASB, even the New King James Version. Stay away from those Bibles, please. They are they are they have nothing close to these words, uh, nothing close to the patterns that you find in the King James Bible, and they're nothing close. Okay, I'll say that they're close, but they're they're close in a serpentine way, where they're twisting things and confusing things. Okay, so we'll get into that in the future videos. Thank you for watching this. I'll see you in the next video.